Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ programming series. In this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion on templates, and this is a fun one. Well, all the lessons should be fun, but this one in particular, we're going to be talking about variadic function templates. So this is the idea that you can have a function template that can take an arbitrary number of parameters. Now, why might you want to do this? Well, let's go ahead and look at a classic example of a function that takes a variable number of arguments. So a very popular function, especially if you're coming from the C programming world, is printf. You can print out as much data as you want in a sort of format string. And maybe for folks who have a little bit of C programming experience, maybe you have used the standard arg uh, header here, standard arg.h, or maybe in C++ you've used this as well, and you have your variable arguments here. And if we go ahead down to this example, we can go ahead and see how to use this. Where basically you have a function here, you sort of set up some structure here to get all of the arguments, and then you have your start and your end, and then you sort of determine what types of arguments you can have. Now, this is a little bit tricky to use, and there's actually a lot of moving pieces here. And even more so, we're doing a lot of this detection to figure out how many arguments we have and go through this control structure at runtime, which costs us something. So there is a slight disadvantage to this in the sense that we have to do this computation every time we call one of these functions here. So instead, in C++, what we're going to be doing is something with a template, which will just, again, generate a function for us that does the right thing given an arbitrary amount of arguments. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look here. So where I want to start here is just discussing variadic functions. So again, we can still use the uh, var args uh, from the C uh, library here and use the uh, C header version of that. So that is all available and we've got a nice example of how to do this on CPP reference. But instead what we want to do is take advantage of this dot 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 in our template parameters. So let me go ahead and explain and build up an example here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just write a little example here. And let's say that our goal is to have some function here. So I'll do a C out here where I can just call some function sum here. And maybe I just want to add up a bunch of numbers. And sometimes I might want six numbers, maybe seven, eight or nine numbers, or just any number. Again, a variable amount of arguments. So that'll be the goal. And let's just go ahead and just start with one number here. Now, how would I write this sum function here? Well, let's just go ahead and write it like a normal function, and then we'll go through the exercise of converting it into a template to get some practice there. So what I would do here is just create some function here. I'd probably guess the return type. In this case, it looks like an integer. And then I'd say that there's some argument here, and we'll just return whatever that argument is here. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, save this here. Let's give it a compile, make sure this works reasonably well and well appears to work here so this is sort of our simplest version of the sum function we have it just takes one argument and sums that up and in a way we're sort of thinking about this in a recursive manner so how would i sum up multiple elements well again i could use a loop or sort of think recursively and just call the sum function over and over again adding up each of the individual arguments here okay so how to do that well First and foremost, let's go ahead and improve our sum function and make it a template so it can work with any type. Maybe we want to work with doubles or uh, longs or maybe even strings, for instance. But let's go ahead and just convert this to a template function by typing out template, the type that we're going to re replace with type name t, and then just go ahead through and do our substitutions here for t. And again, I'll go ahead and give this a run. And it will, again, compile and run. And again, because of C++ um, 20 in modern C++, we get the automatic template uh, parameter arguments um, are, are deduced here. It knows it's an integer. But we could be explicit here. And this might become important later on. But we could just go ahead and pass an int like this, again, just as a reminder, and run as follows. OK, but how would we get to the point of doing one, two, three, four here? So if I go ahead and run this, well, we're going to get a bunch of errors here. It's going to say, well, the candidate function that we have is this one, and we only see one parameter being passed in here. So we want to be able to fix that. OK, so let's go ahead and look at how to do this uh, using our C++ uh, syntax here. 
And what we're going to take advantage of is something called a parameter pack. So again, you can sort of think about this as a bunch of parameters and sort of packing them together. Well, at least syntactically. And if I just sort of look at this with the syntax, I see the type that we have and then a dot, 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 and then whatever the pack name is. Okay, so what are we collecting? In this case, it's going to be some arguments in our template parameter list that ultimately go into our function. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what that means in actual C++. So I'll keep this here just so we can keep an eye on it. And it might be worth actually just looking at some examples here if we scroll down just to see how we use this. So we have class or type name here, dot, 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 following this to imply that this is a parameter pack and then whatever we want to call it. And then our types here, or the collection of them, we then give a name into our function here. Okay, so this is whatever the types are, and then the arguments. And we can see a few examples of this as follows. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up in our C++ code here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, add this uh, function here. And it's going to look pretty similar to this sum here. So let me go ahead and just copy this for now. And essentially what I want to do here for our sum function is take in, well, the first argument here and then just keep calling this sort of base case, if you want to think about this recursively, which might be a useful way to think about it, over and over and over again and return the arguments here. So it'll look something like this, where I have the sum and t. And then I want to add in a bunch of arguments. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Uh, so I would want to add in um, another type name here, dot, 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 and then the types. Now, of course, I'm going to try to give this a name here, like args, for instance, which sort of matches what we're doing, just taking in a bunch of arguments. And of course, they could be of different types, but I'm just going to leave it args. So whatever name might be appropriate, you can use. And then in our function, and I'll try to get the dot, dot, dots uh, right here, we have our args, dot, 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 and then however we want to refer to them in the function, maybe a lowercase args here. Okay, and then, well, what are we doing here? Well, we're adding the first argument, which I can give this a better name here. Sometimes start or first would work, but let's go ahead and just say start plus our sum, and then the arguments here that we're taking in, followed by dot, 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 to tell us that we have multiple of them. Okay, the, the actual parameter pack, a bunch of things that are being collected here, okay, from our function. So let's go ahead and just save this and let's go ahead and give this a compile and see if this works here. And I'll go ahead and make this uh, bigger here. And let's go ahead and see if we get any uh, error messages. Well, it seems to compile. And if I run it, well, one plus two plus three plus four, go ahead and do the math in your head, that should be 10 here. So this is actually pretty cool that this actually works here. It's almost like magic in a sense. And it's pretty cool because, well, let's go ahead and add something else here, like five. And I'll go ahead and compile this, run it, and 15. So awesome. So again, why might you use this? Well, maybe you want to write your own print function, print out a bunch of things, or sum a bunch of things up. Maybe these are integer or floating point types, or maybe things like strings. Now let's go ahead and just work with this example just a little bit more to see what's going on here though. Because what I'd like to do here is go ahead and maybe try some unit tests here. So let's go ahead and add uh, one, two, three, four, five, but let's go ahead and just do 2.2F and 3.0, uh, or maybe 3.7 here, just to make sure that we have some doubles and some different types here, just to see if this works here. And I'll go ahead and compile this, still compiles, and I run it and, hmm, well, this is kind of interesting here, because 1 plus 2.2 plus 3.7 plus 4 plus 5, uh, that's not 15 last I checked. We should at least have a 0.9 at the end here. So something fishy is going on with our types here. Let's go ahead and see if we can try to get some insights in our favorite tool, CPP Insights, here. So let me just copy and paste our code here. And let's go ahead and see what's actually being generated. Because what I found here when I was first learning about this is, 
well, a lot of examples would just start off with integers. And then I tried some different numbers and ran into this problem. So let's go ahead and see if we can fix this. And I'll paste this into CPP Insights. And again, this will give us some intuition as to what types were actually generated here. So what's kind of neat here, and I'll make this just a little bit bigger so you can see uh, what's on the right side. Again, you can see our template here, the instantiation here of our sum function. And we see that we have one that's returning an integer. Okay, so let's see if we get one that is returning a double. Well, here is our um, function uh, template with a variadic uh, amount or variable amount of arguments here. So that sort of matches what we have here. And here's our instantiation. And it looks like we have one that gives us an int and then a float and then a double and then an int and an int. And that matches what we have here, an int followed by a float and a double and then two integers. Okay. And then we have another one here that is taking just the last four types here. And then we have another one here that's just taking the last three types. And then one that's just taking the last two types here. Okay, so uh, one thing that's interesting just to see here is how many different instantiations of templates we get. So that might be something to consider with this actual feature, the amount of code that's actually being generated. And that could be a problem depending on different uh, domains that you're working in if code size is really important. So use the feature carefully. And again, here's the actual uh, function call here where we can see the different uh, types that have been expanded. Now, interestingly, if I want to fix this example, since we've seen that, well, our sum function here, just uh, uh, the sort of base case, uh, if I go up here, just returns an integer type here. So let's go ahead and play around with our code and see if we can um, get one that creates a double type here. Like, what if I just try double here? And let's go ahead and run it. Let's see if we get an instantiation of something with a double. Well, I still have the int. And up oh, here's one that looks like it returns a double, but I think that's what we had before here. Double, float, and hmm, okay, maybe this will work here. Let's go ahead and test it out here. So I'll just go ahead and um, change this line here to be just a little bit more specific about how we want to treat our first number here. And if I run it, then that'll make sure that this one is a double plus the 2.2, which is some sort of floating type here. Now let's go ahead and just play around with this just a little bit more here. Like what if I make this a one here and then I have a 3.7 here. And then I'll go ahead and save this, compile it, run it, and darn, I'm back to 14. Um, but it should have a 0.7 somewhere. So the way that I found to fix this is, well, just to be really explicit about treating our first two types as doubles so that we have a return type that will be a double type. So this is something that you can run into. And upon my research, there's also some other things you can do, like um, work with common type. There are some functions for that that might assist in this. But this is just something to be a little bit careful about. And especially if you're going to start mixing in types like strings and different things, um, they have to know how to interact properly with the plus operator. So that seemed to be the gotcha or the catch here. So just something to be aware of when you're using this function here to check your results and make sure that you're getting something that at least upon, uh, if you're using these integer types, using the first two numbers, adding them together, you get the right type. And there are different ways you could sort of cheat here. For example, if you just change the return type to double, if you wanted to be explicit about it. But again, I felt that was not in the spirit of our templates. So I just went ahead and uh, made sure that the first two values were treated as doubles. So the subsequent additions were with double values. Anyways, folks, I hope you found this useful and at least this part interesting. Uh, and if you're going to try to use these types of functions, do make sure to test them out. Do make sure to play around with them. And they could be, again, really powerful ways for you to just generate a lot of code. And again, the advantage of this versus doing things in the old C way with var args is we just have the exact function that we need and we don't need to do any additional runtime checks. We just have something that will sum things up. And you could probably even do more with this with maybe evaluating some of these expressions at compile time if you've played around with const expert, but I'll leave that for you to do. So folks, I hope you found this as a useful lesson. 
And if you did, make sure to give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss future lessons. And if you have more questions about this type of thing or want to see more of these types of generic programming in C++ lessons, go ahead and leave a comment below so I know what you're looking for. Thanks for your time and I hope you had fun.